Caitlin. Mr. President, you just reiterated that you hope to have the country reopened by Easter. You said earlier you would like to see churches packed on that day. Uh, my question is, you have two doctors on stage with you. Have either of them told you that's a realistic timeline? I think we're looking at a timeline. We're discussing it. We had a very good meeting today. Uh, you know, if you add it all up, uh, that's uh, probably nine days plus another two and a half weeks. It's a period of time that's longer than the original two weeks. So uh, we're going to look at it. We'll only do it if it's good. And maybe we do sections of the country. We do large sections of the country. That could be too. But no, we're very much in touch with Tony and with Deborah on everything we're doing. Who suggested that? I just that thought day? it was a beautiful time. It would be a beautiful time, a beautiful timeline. It's a great day. The it was it was based on a certain uh, level of weeks from the time we started, and it happened to arrive. Actually, uh, we were thinking in terms of sooner. Uh, I'd love to see it come even sooner, but I just think it would be a beautiful timeline. John, Mr. President, if you look at what we've just seen in the last day or so, you've seen uh, the number of known coronavirus cases in the country double in just two days. Another 95 people have died just in the last. Uh, 24 hours. Uh, New York, New York's governor is saying this is spreading like a bullet train across the country, and the governor of Louisiana is saying that his country, that his state, uh, may not be able to handle the cases uh, that they're facing uh, by the by early April. So, what are you seeing in all of this that leads you to think yeah, that we could reopen by sure. Easter or even earlier? Sure. We're working with all of them. We can be talking about large sections of our country because there are sections of our country that you didn't talk about that are doing unbelievably well. They have very little incidents or problem, uh, very small numbers. It's very possible that they won't be ever subject to what's happening in New York. New York is definitely a hot spot. There's no question about it. Uh, and you know what we're doing in New York to try and help. And uh, I think we're doing an incredible job. We're going to have the hospitals up quickly, the medical centers also quickly. Uh, but we'll just have to see. We have to follow it. We have to see. We're going to look at that curve. We're going to see when it starts coming down. And uh, we'll do the best job that can be done. John, please. Uh, question for you, Mr. President, Dr. Fauci, if we could. Just when looking at this idea of an Easter timeline, and I don't know that's probably flexible, what are the metrics by which you will make the decision as to whether you can say, yes, we can open up this area of the country, or no, we can't open up that area? I mean, will you be looking at disease yeah. numbers? Will you be looking at possible containment, isolation? What I think be we'll looking be looking at? at a lot of things. We'll also be looking, again, at very large portions of our country. And I will be guided very much by Dr. Fauci and by Deborah and by some of the other professionals that work with both of you. And uh, we're going to see what uh, what will be. But that would certainly be, I think that's a, a goal that perhaps can happen, or at least for a very large portion of our country. Uh, Dr. Fauci, since, since, as the President said, you and Dr. Birx and others will be guiding him and making the decision, where are you now with this timeline, 19 days from now? So, I mean, that's really very flexible. We, we just had a conversation with the President in, in the Oval Office talking about, you know, you can look at a date, but you've got to be very flexible. And on a, on a literally day-by-day -day and week-by-week -week basis, you need to evaluate the feasibility of what you're trying to do. And, John, you asked for, you know, what kind of metrics, what kind of data. When you look at the country, I mean, obviously, no one is going to want to tone down things when you see what's going on in a place like New York City. I mean, I mean that's just, you know, good public health practice and common sense. But the country is a big country, and there are areas of the country and I, and I refer to this in my opening remarks, that we really need to know more about what the penetrance is there. So if we do the kind of testing what we're doing, and testing will always be associated by identification, isolation, and contact tracing, and you find, after a period of time, that there are areas that are very different from other areas of the country, you may not want to essentially treat it as a, just one force for the entire country but look at flexibility in different areas. So I think people might get the misinterpretation. You're just going to lift everything up, and even somebody's going like that. You, I mean, that, that's not going to happen. It's going to be looking at the data. And what we don't have right now that we really do need is we need to know what's going on in those areas of the country where there isn't an obvious outbreak. Is there something underneath the surface that says, wait a minute, you better be careful and really clamp down, or what looks there that you don't really have to be as harsh as you are in other areas. So it's looking at information that up to this point, John, we never had. 
So it's a flexible situation. So is New York becoming on more? Is New York becoming the epicenter? Well, it certainly is by far the, if you call it hot, if you call it any word you want to use, it is uh, at a level that uh, I was speaking to Tony before. It's a level that no place else is close. It's very unfortunate. You know, one of the things that uh, that's happened that we've done, I think, a really good job on. I think that it's something special. What's happened is. Uh, I learned from Dr. Burks a little while ago when she said, I learned it actually this afternoon, uh, in eight days, because we kept hearing about South Korea, and they had a very tough time at the beginning, if you remember. In eight days, we're doing more testing than they've done in eight weeks. That's a tremendous turn. And with our testing, it's going exponentially. It's going up, up, up every day. So we're going to be able to do things with this very highly sophisticated testing. And it's also uh, the test itself is considered the best test. So on top of doing now more than anybody else, we have a very high quality test. Uh, that makes a big difference. It also makes a big difference even in terms of opening, because we're going to see those areas like the hot spots. But New York City definitely is a very hot spot. When Steve? You, when you talk about areas that you could open up, what specifically are you looking at? What states? Are you talking about out west? Well, or you can Midwest talk about the, the, exactly? the farm belt. Take a look at the farm belt. Take a look at uh, areas out west. Look at big sections of Texas. Uh, I was talking to the great governor of Texas, they've done a fantastic job out there, but they have very big sections of Texas where, you know, it's uh, it's like numerous states, frankly. But we can uh, have large sections of, if we want to do it that way, we can have large sections of the country open. I think it's very important that we start moving on that and start thinking about it, because our country wants to be open, our people want it to be open, and they want it, they want, they're raring to go. And I think it's one of the reasons that we're going to have a tremendous bounce back. I think it's going to go very quickly. Also, I want to thank, while I'm here, I want to thank Larry for the job he's done, Steve Mnuchin for the job he's done. Uh, if you look at Peter Navarro, he's sort of doing different things. He's really, uh, he's a force in terms of getting uh, masks and getting all of the uh, ventilators and all the things. He's been fantastic, Peter. But I also want to thank Congress, because whether or not we're happy that they haven't quite gotten there yet, they have been working long hours. I'm talking Republicans and Democrats, all of them, the House, the Senate. I want to thank Congress, because they are really trying to get there, and I think they will. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much. Did thank you. Thank you. President, about the quarantining for people who left New York? Did you give Governor Cuomo a heads up about quarantining? We're talking to them about that. Did you have some Is it wise to pack churches on Easter? Thanks. All right, so there you have it. Uh, a relatively uh, upbeat assessment by the President of the United States. Uh, he says uh, the U.S. is making tremendous progress, a tremendous bounce back. He thinks fairly quickly. He's still sticking by his assertion that maybe by Easter Sunday, Maybe by Easter Sunday, uh, there will be full houses and churches around the country. Uh, a very different, much more cautious assessment from uh, Dr. Fauci, uh, who's the top expert on infectious diseases. He says uh, you got to look uh, at the data, you got to study it carefully. He certainly wasn't as upbeat about the uh, progress that's being made as the President of the United States. We anticipated that. Uh, Let's bring in Sanjay Gupta. Dr. Gupta, let's talk a little bit about uh, what, you, uh, what emerged to you as some of the major developments in this briefing. Well, you know, the president sort of started off by saying, look, you know, we're going to follow the data, we're going to take the advice of the scientists and, and all that. And, uh, and then, you know, as the, as the uh, briefing sort of went on, uh, it was this idea, again, that the president raised that by Easter, uh, you know, all of these restrictions would sort of be lifted and things would be back to normal. As you mentioned, there were two things that really struck me about what Dr. Fauci said. First, uh, as, you, as you point out, uh, Wolf, he said, we need to look at the data. And, you know, Wolf, it's, it's pretty clear that uh, a week from now, which is going to be the 15-day mark, the data is going to look worse. Uh, it, it, it is, because the, the image that we have right now really reflects about uh, 10 to 14 days ago. And we know there's been continued spread over these last 10 to 14 days. So uh, even if some of these social distancing measures are starting to work, uh, you're not going to feel that impact uh, in, in this time. So um, at that 15-day mark, if the numbers look worse, I'm not sure how you could justify uh, possibly starting to loosen some of those restrictions. It just doesn't make sense. The other thing that Dr. Fauci sort of brought up was this idea, I've heard it a few times now, of hot spots. 
Uh, maybe there's these hot spots around the country, New York obviously being one of them, California, Washington. And, and could we see a situation where they start to focus in on these hot spots, keep these uh, restrictions in for the country for a uh, longer period of time than just uh, two weeks, uh, but these hot spots get, get added sort of attention maybe even longer possible. I've heard that raised twice now. Ambassador Birch brought it up now, uh, Dr. Fauci. So we're going to track that and see where that sort of proposal goes. But clearly, Wolf, uh, the 15-day mark, which is next Monday, and this idea that maybe restrictions be loosened at that time, I think that's no longer even really being discussed, Wolf. 